Beekeeping is like cutting down a tree. You go out there, you have an ax, and you have a tree, a dead tree that needs cut down. You swing the ax, you make a strike at the tree. Eh, it doesn't work out really well. You got a long way to go, maybe it's a big tree. You keep swinging, you keep swinging, you keep swinging. You're getting frustrated because you didn't think it was gonna be this hard. It, wouldn't, it shouldn't take this long. There's gotta be easier way. I could get a chainsaw and chainsaw the tree down. Just like being a beekeeper. I don't have to keep bees. I can go to the grocery store. I can buy a jar of honey. Why am I keeping bees for? Why am I cutting this tree down with an ax? But you keep swinging. Here it goes. Oh, it's coming. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> It's all about self-discipline. Beekeeping is cool because it's, it teaches us self-discipline. Do you realize when we have personal self-discipline, how we can enjoy life so much more? Here in the US, we're winding down our season of beekeeping. We're getting into fall and winter now. Winter is predicted to be another tough one on bees. 50% of bees in the US die every winter. Are you worried about it? What I'm gonna share with you today, you need to hear. Most beekeepers approach beekeeping as a sprint, not a marathon. Let me explain. A lot of beekeepers get into beekeeping and they just wanna jump right into it because a friend down the road is keeping bees or they like honey or they have some gardens that need pollinated or they wanna save the world by getting more bees in the air. I understand that, all good reasons, right? And it's sometimes people just start because it's a fun hobby. They're looking for something to do. What they're not really prepared for is that they don't understand beekeeping needs to be approached not as a sprint, but it's a marathon. It's not something you jump into and overnight you're a beekeeping success. You have honey just pouring into your kitchen in big bottles. Your bees just expand. You go from one hive to thousands of hives and become a pollinator of almonds in California. And now you're just the rock star of beekeeping. And you're asked to be the keynote speaker at all the major beekeeping conferences around the US. No, it doesn't happen that way. <laughs> it really doesn't. A lot of people get into beekeeping and think, okay, this is a way I can finally retire from the job that I hate. I'll start beekeeping and I love Love the idea of being outdoors I'll be a beekeeper and I can just tell the people back at the plant or at the office take this job and shove it I'm not working here anymore I'm a beekeeper and I'm making millions of dollars being a beekeeper I think the reason that most people who do poorly with beekeeping is for one reason they keep their hand on the bell so in Navy SEAL training there's always a big brass bell and at any time any student can run out, run up to that bell, and ring the bell. When they ring that bell, it's over. They don't have to be experiencing cold nights anymore, cold wet nights, harsh training conditions. Ring the bell, they're out. It's over. They can go to McDonald's. They can, have, they can eat anything they want to. They can get warm. They can get dry. Ring the bell. So if you take beekeeping and you approach it with kind of half commitment, or really not having a passion for it, or real commitment to it, you're kind of like having your hand on the bell. And so you don't give it as much attention that it really requires. Now, in no way am I trying to compare becoming a Navy SEAL to beekeeping, but beekeeping takes self-discipline. Now, if you approach beekeeping with one hand on the bell, like, I'm just doing this as a hobby. I'm not really committed to it. I don't really care about mites. I don't care about education. Throw, throw my bees in a box, hopefully they do well, make me a little honey. If they don't and they die, I don't care. Well then, you're setting yourself up for beekeeping failure. That's the sprint of it. You just jump in and hope that all will work well. The marathon is you have a broader, more of a global approach, kind of a wide goal, a, a large goal of what you wanna do with beekeeping. Primarily, I think with beekeeping, one of the things all of us should be involved in, how does beekeeping make me a better person? So when I started beekeeping, what really helped me is I wanted to learn. I wanted to grow as a person, but I wanted to learn and grow as a beekeeper. And so beekeeping taught me how to learn and grow, and I applied that to other aspects of my life as well. Beekeeping can help us become more self-disciplined. Look, I don't always wanna do a mite test. 
but I have to go out there and do the mite test. <laughs> I don't always want to inspect a hive. I have to go out there and do that inspection. I don't always want to find out if my queen is laying well, because what if she's all the way down three boxes below and I have to move 30 frames out of the way to find her, right? I don't always want to do that. It's easier for me to say, mm, I don't feel like it. Ding, 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 ding. I'm out of the picture. Just let the bees do whatever they want to. If they fail, I'll buy a new package next year. I understand that's what some people have to do, but that's not what all of us have to do. We can be more disciplined. We can learn to be a more disciplined person in beekeeping. That spills over to other areas of our life. That's what's so exciting about it. Beekeeping can be a training environment to help us in other areas of our life, like this. In beekeeping, we learn skills. The skill of being able to work a colony a skill to be able to understand what our bees need. We can have a skill develop in keeping our equipment working and clean and keeping the bees healthy, a skill set that we learn to develop. If we learn to develop skill sets in beekeeping, then we can apply that to other areas of our life. We can learn skill sets that then can be placed in our life and we can even build up our own self more. We can develop skills that will help us have a better job, skills that will help us have a better relationship with other people around us, with our loved ones. We can develop skills. If we learn how to develop skills in beekeeping, we can then apply that in other areas of our life. I'm excited about this. And we can uh, find ourselves developing more skills not just in beekeeping. When I started beekeeping, beekeeping was so frustrating. My hand was on that bell every day. I just wanted to quit beekeeping so bad. I didn't understand it. I didn't like being stung by bees. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't start beekeeping the right way. We, we pulled them out of a, a dead tree that fell over. The bees hated me. They stung me. Uh, I, I just didn't know what was going on. Way back then in the 90s, there weren't just that many things about beekeeping available like there is now. There was no internet for me. There were no books available. They were few and far between. I just didn't really have much going on for me. I lived in the middle of an Amish community in Ohio, and I just didn't have anyone really to show me what beekeeping was all about. When mites came into our country and killed the only two colonies that I started with, I did not ring the bell. When small hive beetle infested my bee yard and I had probably 70 or 80 colonies being attacked by small hive beetle, I did not ring the bell. I went out there and started things to kill those small hive beetles. I understand that you may not be all that committed to beekeeping. That's fine. Maybe you have life situations that doesn't allow you to do that. Perfectly understandable. But if you're starting to get frustrated because you think, oh, why is this happening? Why are my bees dying? I mean, look, we're facing winter. 50% of bees are going to die. If you have five colonies, you're going to be left with two or three colonies, right? If you have one colony, you may lose it. You have two, you lose one. It's really risky trying to get bees through the winter, even when we do everything we can because, you know, bees are just a living organism. There are a lot of things that can go wrong, even when we do it all right. And so I want to encourage you today, don't give up. Stay in there. Make a commitment today that no matter what happens to your bees this winter, you're going to come out of winter in the spring and you're going to do it again. You're not going to give up. It's so easy to quit. We live in a time when quitting comes so easily. Let's face it. If we learn not to quit in beekeeping, we can transfer that over to other life situations and not be a quitter when it gets hard in other areas of our life. I am where I am today because I'm just too stubborn to quit sometimes. Sometimes I'm too dumb to know I should have quit. <laughs> so uh, that may be more the case. But if we can learn to not be quitters, not to give up when it gets tough, then we can make it through some tough times and get out on the other side of it and be better for it. Oh, I'm excited. This has got to be encouraging somebody today. So it's not so much that I'm trying to get you to stick with beekeeping, to stay with beekeeping. What I'm trying to get you to see today is use beekeeping 
as a place of learning, a place of training, where through beekeeping, you can learn things that you can apply to other areas of your life and become a better person, a stronger individual. One of the things I notice a lot about beekeepers, beekeepers are very emotional about their bees. When their bees don't do well, they get really, really emotional. And I understand that. We get attached to our bees. We put a lot of time, we invest a lot of our energy into bees. And when something doesn't go right, it is emotional. I understand that. But this is something that we can learn about life because we don't live our lives with our emotions controlling us. If we do that, we're not gonna enjoy life at all. Feelings can start controlling our life. A lot of people in beekeeping actually keep bees based on their feelings. I feel I don't have a queen. I feel I don't have any mites. I kind of feel like they're doing fine or I feel like they're not doing very well. Take the feeling out and get good data on it. Do I have a queen? Do I have mites? Are they doing well? You do that by inspections. Don't live by your feelings. Don't let feelings govern how you keep bees and don't let feelings govern how you live your life. You can't let other people make you feel a certain way and live your life based on how they are making you feel. You yourself have to have data on you that you're okay, that you're a good person, that you're not gonna be driven by what people think about you, but what you believe and know about yourself to be true, and you have your own purpose and your own goals. That's the way it is in beekeeping. You walk out to the hive, you have a purpose, you have goals, and you know what you're doing, and you understand bees well enough to know, this is what I see, this is what I've observed, this is what I need to do. Take the feelings out of it. If we really want to achieve things in life, achieve our goals and dreams, self-discipline is what gets us there. All we have to do is be 1% better today than we were yesterday. And as time progresses, we achieve our goals and dreams. Beekeeping teaches that. All I have to do is go out there today, be disciplined. I say to myself, I don't feel like doing a mite test, but it's time to do a mite test. My hand's on the bell, I'm not gonna ring it, I'm gonna go do a mite test. That's self-discipline. And if I can learn to be self-disciplined with my bees, then I can move that over, incorporate that over into my life, and I can be self-disciplined with my life. Use beekeeping as the teacher of life, as a teacher for you to become more than who you are right now. Some people say, I don't wanna be stung. I don't like the feeling of being stung. I'm gonna ring the bell. It hurts. I don't wanna go on anymore. But all you have to do is be self-disciplined and put better gear on. Thicker gloves, two pair of pants, two bee suits, duct tape everything. You can go out there like an astronaut and nothing's gonna get through your suit. You can be self-disciplined and overcome the problems. Find a solution, you can keep going. That's what's neat about beekeeping. It teaches us to be problem solvers. How to solve problems that you see in beekeeping really makes a difference between those who succeed and those who fail. In my most recent video, I shared with you these six books that can really help you in beekeeping. Now, when you learn what's in these six books, then when you have a problem, you have more data. You have more information to solve that problem. You have more knowledge. You don't have to just depend on one thing you heard on the internet or what one friend told you you should do. You have an arsenal of information that you can draw from and start solving your problems based on science. Beekeeping means perseverance. You keep swinging the ax. If you have two hives and one dies coming out of winter, in the spring, you make a split. Now you're back to two. You persevere. When you have mites, the count gets too high, you treat them. You find ways to get rid of your mites. You persevere, you keep swinging the ax, take your hand off the bell, get into the game, push harder. You can learn more, it's exciting. This is kind of what it takes. Boy, I tell you, being a beekeeper, it really does take grit and perseverance to hang in there and keep doing it. I wanna encourage you to do that. Most people that are successful in beekeeping, successful in life, it boils down that every day they were committed to wake up and do it again. Just showing up. Just showing up is huge. Showing up to keep bees tomorrow. If your bees die, let's keep bees again in the spring. I mean, let's face it. If your bees die, 
You can get a new package next year. You've already got all this drawn comb. Those beads are gonna be off to a head start. Wow, look at this coffee mug. All the way from the state of Montana. Dear David and Sherry, enclosed is a coffee cup from Montana. And I want you to know how much I appreciate your YouTube videos and the wealth of information you share to help the girls and to help this beekeeper. I hope you enjoy a cup of joe in your Montana coffee cup. This is from Mark out in Montana. Hey Mark, thanks a lot, I appreciate that a lot. A lot of you have been sending me boxes of gifts and things, I suppose, and I will be opening them. Don't give up on me. Now, if you didn't watch the video where I talked about the six books that every beekeeper should be reading, take a look at it over here. These six books are gonna help you know how to solve problems with your bees. Take a look, I'll meet you over there.